In this video, we're going to be overclocking the AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. What I've got here is the new B-Link GTR9. I recently did kind of a first look video and I showed you that inside of the BIOS, we did have an AMD overclocking section. And on the channel, we've tested the Max Plus 395 several times and a bunch of different systems from laptops to tablets, other mini PCs. But I've never had an option to overclock this chip until now with the B-Link GTR9. If you're not familiar with this device, obviously it's got that kind of studio look to it and I really do like what they've done here. B-Link has definitely stepped up their game in the last few years when it comes to the build quality of their mini PCs and even performance, especially with their higher end units. But like I mentioned, this is rocking that AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. So we've got 16 cores, 32 threads, and the Radeon 8060 Si GPU, which at the time of making this video is the most powerful iGPU on the market. In my initial first look video at the B-Link GTR9, I give you a look at the BIOS and we noticed right down here, we've got the AMD overclocking section. So uh, that's exactly what we're gonna be using here to overclock on the system side. I'll also use some software to kind of adjust limits and things like that. But uh, from advanced, the first thing I wanna do here is just make sure that we're in performance mode and we can do that from our SMU common options. Yeah, there we go, I reset the BIOS. So performance mode, this should take us up to 140 watts, also going to change that fan curve for us, but it's not going to do any overclocking until we go here. It's definitely going to give us a warning, and if you're going to do this on your system, do it at your own risk. We've got our Precision Boost Overdrive. We're going to set this to advance. PBO limits can be changed uh, from manual. I'm not going to mess with that in the BIOS. I've actually got a third-party application that we can do that from within Windows if we need to. The boost overdrive scaler can also be changed here up to 10x. And again, we've got software that'll handle that. What I wanted to mess around with was the CPU boost clock override. So we can go positive with it and it looks like we can only go up to 200. So that's gonna take us from 5.1 gigahertz on this CPU up to 5.3 and the GPU boost clock override. This is what I'm more excited about because we've got plenty of CPU performance with the Max Plus 395 plus 200 megahertz. We've got the graphics curve optimizer and let me see what we can do here. Okay, yeah. So we can set the magnitude positive or negative and we've got the curve optimizer for the CPU. We can go all cores or per core. We're gonna see what it does just like this. So. With this overclock, I will need to adjust the TDP because uh, I would definitely want to reach those clocks on the CPU and GPU. So from here, we've got just a bit of an overclock on it. I'm going to go ahead and save, exit, get right into Windows, and we'll see what's up with this thing. Okay, so I've been up and running for a little while now with the overclock going on the GPU and the CPU. No artifacting, I haven't had any crashes or anything like that, and I'm really putting a heavy load on this thing. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen AI Max 395. Of course, we've got that 8060 Si GPU, 96 gigs of VRAM dedicated. I could take this down to 32 and still be fine, but uh, we'll see what this thing does. Now, when it comes down to it, up in the clock on the CPU and GPU can help. But another thing we needed to kind of do here was just up the TDP. I've also messed around with the PBO limits. Unfortunately, not much has changed there, but I've used a third-party application. Uh, you could go with something like, let's say, x86 tuning utility if you wanted to. And I've taken the TDP up on this Max Plus 395 to 180 watts. Definitely not recommended, but with this, I did want to make sure that we were reaching the maximum clocks on the CPU and GPU. To give you an idea, I've got a CPU-Z here. We'll stress this out. Right down here, you'll see it jump on up. So 173. If I put a load on that GPU, it gets real close. And actually, if you take a look right over here, the maximum I've been able to hit was 175 watts right there in the middle. Obviously, it's kind of overdoing it with this system, but I'm not even worried about uh, CPU temps on this thing. Maximum I hit while running Cinemage R24 was 84.9. Definitely getting hotter than this thing stock. Stock TDP, this will run up to 140 watts in performance mode. So we are pushing a lot more into it. So we'll go ahead and stop that. Uh, another thing we can take a look at here is our maximum clocks. And right there, 5.3. So we do have that overclock. 
This only goes up to 5.1, so we've got 200 extra there. And the last thing I wanted to show you here before we get into testing were the iGPU clocks. So we can give it a second, and our GPU clock is right up here at the top. We should be able to get up to 3100 megahertz. And stock, this is at 29. So yeah, we're right there, up at 3100 megahertz. With this, running benchmarks, I have noticed a boost in performance. Uh, and a lot of it does come from that TDP change. But to give you an idea, the first benchmark we have here is Geekbench 6. And at the top, we've got the overclocked results. You can see that the single core is up over 3,000 now. So we're at 3,022 multi-core 23,271 and obviously with the stock clocks at the very bottom we got a nice boost on the single and multi-core performance with this overclock here. Next one I ran was Cinebench R24 and I didn't see a huge jump here. I mean we did gain with the overclock. Single core coming in at 106 with the stock clocks, 116 with the overclock. And as for multi-core, stock clocks give us a 1,912, overclock 1,992. I was actually expecting to see a little more here in single and multi. Moving over to the Radeon 8060S iGPU, Geekbench OpenCL benchmark at the top, overclocked by just 200 megahertz, we're up to a 101,993, and with those stock clocks, we're right there at 99,398. And finally, 3D Mark Time Spy, stock configuration, 11,233 total score here. With the overclock, we're up to 11,628. And as you can see, with the GPU and CPU scores here, we're coming ahead with that overclock, and I kind of figured we would for sure. Now it's time to check out some real-world gaming with this overclock, and the first one we have is Forza Horizon 5. We're at 4K extreme settings, no FSR, so we're maxed out here at a native 4K resolution. If you take a look up in the top left-hand corner, I've got Afterburner running, and with that 8060S, you can see we're right there on the edge of 3100 megahertz. A little under there, uh, but I have seen it boost up. Not bad, I mean, it's definitely using a lot of that iGPU. We're up to 97, 98% utilization with it, but the game is running amazingly at 4K Extreme. Next up, Doom the Dark Ages, and with this, I did need to add a little bit of FSR. That's just kind of the way it is with this one. We're at Ultra 1440p FSR set to balance, and performance is great. Of course, using some frame gen with all of these games is really gonna help out but I wanted to keep it, you know, as native as possible. Obviously, we did have a little bit of scaling going on with FSR, but it's not bad. And the last game I wanted to show off was Cyberpunk 2077. So I've got a few ways that I want to test this. First up, we're just using the Ultra preset. 1440p looks really good here. We're seeing an average of around 68 FPS. And I kind of suspected this would be the case. With the Ultra preset, FSR is only set to quality. Up in the top left hand corner, again, real close to 3100 on the 8060S. And we're pulling a little over 150 watts in total from this Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. But with this setup, I also wanted to see how it would handle ray tracing. And we're just gonna straight take it to ray tracing ultra here. Now I know without any frame gen, it's probably gonna fall on its face pretty hard, but I wanna see what it does anyway. So we'll take this up to Ray Tracing Ultra. We're using FSR 2.1. It's set to auto, and to tell you the truth, it's probably gonna get real close to the FSR performance preset. And yeah, definitely fell right on its face. I knew this was gonna happen. Now, it's an iGPU. It's an AMD iGPU at that. And obviously, when it comes to like Ray Tracing, NVIDIA usually always takes the win. But uh, for an iGPU at 1440p with Ray Tracing Ultra, not horrible but we can get a lot more out of it. So what I wanna do now is turn on FSR frame generation. And now with FSR frame gen on, 1440p ray tracing ultra, it's a really playable experience. Obviously we've got a lot of generated frames here. We went from like 36, 34 on average up to over 80. So it's making a whole bunch of fake frames, but it's still really impressive to see this. And to tell you the truth, I wouldn't mind playing like this, but I'm not a huge fan of ray tracing anyway. I'd probably just take it right back down to Ultra and have a great time with it. So 
So overall, when it comes down to overclocking this chip, I mean, you can definitely gain a little bit from it. It's not a huge performance bump, and I do wish we had a little more leadway uh, with the settings we have. I've done a few things trying to see if we could overclock this just a bit more, but unfortunately, it kind of looks like it might be impossible, at least with this mini PC. Either way, it was the first one we were able to take the clocks up at all on the Max Plus 395, and performance here is definitely impressive, but it's also really impressive at those stock clocks, given that this is an iGPU. If you're interested in checking out my initial first look video, I'll leave a link for that in the description. And of course, I will be testing SteamOS on this or a very similar operating system. Depends on what I can get installed. So uh, that'll be coming. So if you want to see a video like that, make sure you hit the like button and think about subscribing. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.